This video is an introduction to torsion springs, focusing mainly on the relationship between torque, force and rate for specification purposes. When working out the strength of the spring to use, two of the main considerations are spring rate, which is based on how stiff the spring wire is, and torque at one or more loaded positions. Other factors of interest may include coil diameter, spring stress, leg length, leg type, wire diameter, operating length, loaded angles and rod or tube assembly support. We will go into most of these other considerations in future videos. We are going to assume the spring is contained by a rod through the middle of the coils in clearance to the internal diameter or a tube that surrounds the coil's outer diameter. There are instances where there is no support, but in most cases, something prevents the spring from straying away from the central pivot. The pivot is marked as the cross in the images. One of the arms is also fixed while the other rotates. You probably have a specific loading or force requirement at a set distance from the pivot. This could be a loading point in an associated piece of assembly geometry attached to the moving spring arm. As long as the load is perpendicular to the arm and the pivot, the equation for calculating force is torque over length. Torque is therefore force times length. If the load is not perpendicular, then this must be accounted for. Force becomes torque over length times sine angle, while torque is force times length times sine angle. So let's take a requirement of 5 newtons force loaded perpendicular to the wire arm with the moving spring arm loaded to 45 degrees from free length. Torque is force times length in this instance, so 5 newtons times the load distance from the pivot, in this case 70 millimetres, gives us a torque of 350 newton millimetres. We know the force, but just for argument's sake, torque over length is 350 over 70, which gives us our input force of 5 newtons. Knowing these basic requirements allows us to work out our required spring rate. So taking the calculated torsion of 350 newton millimetres and loaded rotation angle of 45 degrees, the calculated rate for the spring is 7.78. This is because the rate is calculated per degree of rotation. So we need 7.78 newton millimetres per degree of travel to meet the target load. But let's say we have a new requirement of 5 newtons, still loaded perpendicular to the wire arm, but wound 270 degrees this time. 350 newton millimetres over 270 degrees gives a reduced rate of 1.296 for this design. So the additional rotational travel before meeting the required load means we can specify a much weaker spring. To conclude, the loading angle matters significantly to the specified spring rate. If the requirement is 5 newtons at 45 degrees, then the rate is much higher than it would be at 270 degrees. But if you have a spring that needs to operate between 270 and 45 degrees, then it will only be able to transmit 5 newtons at one of the lengths. The rate for any given spring is constant, so if it transmits 5 newtons at 270 degrees at a rate of 1.296, then at 45 degrees the torque will be 58.33 newton millimetres. This roughly translates to 0.833 newtons for this particular design. 